Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. In this video we're going to look at some five tanks It's sitting in tier 10 that actually existed in real life and saw real combat. Now look, most of the tanks in tier 10 are either totally made up, such as the 215B, the British tank that never existed anywhere, not even in somebody's brain, and they were nothing more than just fantasy. Or you could think of, I don't know, the T-22, which was a paper tank. Okay, it got to wooden mock-up, but realistically it was a paper tank. It never really existed. Or we have those that were merely prototypes, such as the Leopard 1, a tank that was a prototype and led to the other tank, the Leopard A1, which is the tank that entered production. However, among all these fanciful tier 10s, there are actually real tanks. Tanks that really did exist. And in some cases, they really saw combat. Unlike that of the mouse, which whilst existing, kind of, never saw any combat, despite what some of the reports say. And it was only prototype. Yes, there is a mouse sat in Kubinka Tank Museum, but that's merely the turret of Prototype V2 mated to the hull of Prototype V1 in order to produce or reproduce what a mouse tank would have actually looked like. Forgetting all of that, there are some tanks that really saw combat. And here is my list of five actual tanks sitting in Tier 10 that really saw combat. Starting my list is number one, the Sheridan. This is a tier 10 light tank sitting on the American tech tree. Now in real life, this tank was designed in 1959 as a light amphibious tank. And its real name is actually the M551 Sheridan. It entered service in 1967, with two squadrons being sent to South Vietnam in 1969. The Sheridan therefore saw combat in Vietnam, and by 1972, over 200 Sheridans were in combat use in Southern Vietnam, where it actually received mixed reviews. Many found the Sheridan a very capable tank with the terrain it found in Vietnam because it didn't get as bogged down like many of the other conventional tanks but its armour was very ineffective with many Sheridans being knocked out by handheld RPGs something that conventional tanks really didn't have a problem with the other problem with the Sheridan was its gun which actually wasn't that good. Well, the gun itself was okay. It was the ammunition that was terrible. And it resulted in a lot of failed shots. Now, the Sheridan came with two types of ammunition. And yes, one of them was ATGMs. <gasps> and those ATGMs were incredibly expensive. And they also tended to mount the gun. Not only that, but the missiles themselves were pretty ineffective for the role they were designed for. They were found actually to be pretty uncontrollable the moment they left the barrel and they were actually never used in Vietnam. That reduced the Sheridan to a close infantry support tank, something that it was far better suited for. The 18 GMs, however, were fired in real combat, albeit in a very limited amount. Approximately six were fired in the overall lifespan of the Sheridan. The only recorded use of ATGMs in actual combat was during the 1991 Gulf War, where the missiles were fired at anti-tank positions and there is one reported case of missiles being fired at a T-55. Now, unlike the game version, the real-life Sheridan only held 20 rounds of main armament, with a further capacity to hold a maximum of 9 ATGMs. Not only that, but due to the strange design of the ammunition, basically it was a caseless 152mm round, which were fixed. Now, fixed means that the warhead was factory fitted to the propellant charge, 
and they sometimes separated when you loaded them, rendering the round useless. Crews would then discard them onto the floor, making the Sheridan prone to ammo racks of a sort from the slightest of sparks. Now in the game we don't really get to ammo rack the Sheridan that often when in real life that's how they really got destroyed. Now in Vietnam they found that Sheridans because they had a very thin hull armor because it was made of aluminium they when they would roll over anti-personnel mines those mines would penetrate the hull cause heat and spark which would then set fire and give rise to a secondary kind of ammunition rack explosion that totally destroyed the tank. In fact, most losses to the Sheridans in Vietnam were caused in this way, either by anti-tank and anti-tank or anti-personnel mines or RPGs that went on to cause what is called a secondary ammo rack explosion. Despite all of this, the Sheridan served the US forces from 1969 until its eventual retirement in 1997. No other nation apart from the US is known to have operated the Sheridan, although Australia did consider the Sheridan, but decided really didn't meet their standards or requirements, so they never bought it. In total, around 1,662 Sheridans were eventually built. Sticking with US tanks, at number two we have the M60. Now this in the game is a tier 10 premium tank and it sits in the American line. It's not a tech tree, however, it is premium and it's listed as a medium tank. Now the M60 in real life actually did exist and it did see combat. The tank itself was designed in 1957 in an attempt to upgrade the M48 pattern. Now the M60 entered service officially in 1959 designated a second generation MBT. Like the Sheridan, the M60 was initially deployed to the Vietnam War, but only in the engineering variation role, although some mistakenly believe that M6s were actually used in a combat role over in Vietnam, which is actually not correct. The M60 itself saw its first real combat during the Yom Kippur War in 1973, where they were used by the Israeli armed forces. M60s were also used in the Iran-Iraq War in 1982 as part of the Iranian armed forces, where the tank performed incredibly well against the likes of the T-55, the T-62 and the T-72. The US themselves first used the M60 in actual combat during the Gulf War in 1991, although strictly speaking, they were used operationally during the Grenada operation in 1983, but they didn't really see any actual combat as such. Now, yeah, there are reports that an M60 did knock out a BRDM-2, which is a very lightly armored personnel carrier, but nothing more than that. The M60 itself was extensively sold around the world to some 28 other countries, many of whom still operate the M60 in some capacity. By far the main beneficiary of the M60 is that of Israel, who still have the M60A1 Tagesh AVLB, which is basically a bridge laying vehicle, still in service. The game itself actually creates a rather realistic representation of the M60 tank, although in real life it was designated an MBT, which is not a medium tank. However, the M60 is derived from the M48 Patton tank, which was designated as a medium tank. The M60 in real life is just a modified, albeit extensively modified, M48. In fact, the modifications were so extensive that the US Army Ordnance felt it really did deserve a separate designation altogether. In total, around 15,000 M6s were eventually built. Staying with American tanks, at number three is a tank we just kind of touched on when looking at the M60, that of the M48 pattern. 
Now, in the game, this is called the M48 Pattern. It is listed tier 10 in the American tech tree and is designated as a medium tank. The M48, however, was never called the M48 Pattern. It's actually really called the M48 Pattern 3. That was its official title. And it evolved from the M47 Pattern 2. The design phase commenced sometime in 1951, with the initial production starting in 1952. The M48 Pattern 3 itself saw massive combat service in Vietnam, where over 600 of these tanks were deployed. They were initially assigned to the US Marine Corps, and the first M48s landed on the shores of Vietnam in 1965. Aside from the US using the M48, they also supplied the South Vietnamese Army with 343 M48s, all of which were either destroyed or captured. The US themselves lost approximately 123 M48s, although the US categorizes a loss as a tank that is non-repairable. But effectively, they lost 123 during the Vietnam War. Maybe not to combat, but they lost them. That brought the total loss of the M48, considering the South Vietnamese versions, at around 500. M48s, however, are still in service, in various capacities, by various nations. The United States itself retired the M48 officially from combat duty in 1973 but they remain in service with the National Guard units until 1987. For me, one of the most bizarre uses for the M48 came during the 1953 film Patton, whereby M48s, named after the famous general that the film was about, were used to portray Tiger I tanks in North Africa, fighting against their very own namesake, heaven forbid. The game, however, gives us a rather accurate representation of the M48, although its standard gun was actually a 90mm, not the 105mm that we actually get in the game. The 105mm was used on the M48A5, a variation to the M48 Pattern 3 that came into service in 1975, and that variant took the standard 105mm used on the M60. So it's debatable if it should have the 90mm or the 105. I mean, strictly speaking, it should have the 90mm and the pattern should have the 105. But that's semantics. It was probably given the gun to balance out the tier. In total, in real life, around 12,000 M48 patterns were eventually built. Finally, moving away from the American tanks, next on our list at number four is the French tank, the AMX-30B. Now in the game, the AMX-30B is a collector. It's found at tier 10, it's on the French line, and it's a tank that really did exist, and one that also saw real life combat. Designed in 1959, the AMX-30 entered production in 1966. The designation AMX-30B was the initial production name in order to distinguish it from that of the prototype called the AMX-30A. The AMX-30B was therefore the main production designation, although the tank would go through further upgrades resulting in further designations. But the 30B is known generally as the basic AMX-30. Now the AMX-30 only saw combat realistically with the Qatari Armed Forces during the 1991 Gulf War in the Battle of Kafji where they knocked out three Iraqi T-55 tanks. However during the Battle of Kafji two Qatari AMX-30s were also lost. The AMX-30B was sold around the world and quite a few AMX 30B still remain in service today, most notably in Bosnia Herzegovina and Saudi Arabia, the latter of which recently deployed AMX 30Bs to the border with Yemen and, as recently as 2015, two were lost during combat. <laughs> 
The game version of this tag is actually a pretty accurate representation of the prototype AMX 30A rather than the production 30B. Now the main difference between the game version and the real life version is that the 30B had 80 millimeters of armor on its front glacius plate and on its turret plate, whereas the game has 120 millimeters on the turret and 55 on the glacius plate. Now this is no doubt created to balance out the tank overall for the game. The other variation is that of weight. Now the real live AMX weighed 36 tons, where the game version only weighs 34 tons, which is approximately that weight of the AMX 30A. Regardless, around 3,571 AMX 30Bs were eventually built. Last, but by no means least, is the final tank in my list. Coming in at number five, the British Chieftain Mark VI. In the game, this again, obviously it's a tier 10, it's a premium tank and it sits in the British line and it's listed as a heavy tank. But the Chieftain was never a heavy tank. Its true designation was MBT, which stands for Main Battle Tank. And it was the mainstay British tank from 1967 until its eventual retirement in 1995. The Chieftain itself derived from the FV4202, another tank that we have in the game, which is a prototype. And that prototype was based on a Centurion hull, not a Chieftain. And they were toying around with it, decided it was unsuitable, and they then moved into the Chieftain design phase in 1957. Now, the initial prototypes of the Chieftain were produced in around 1959. It was never officially designated the Chieftain. That moniker came once it went into massive production. It was actually known by its official name of the FV4201. And it entered production in the early 1960s and eventually entered service as the Mark I in 1965. Now, the Chieftain went through numerous design modifications, resulting in the final production variant, that of the Chieftain Mark V. The modifications and upgrades, however, did not stop after the final production version, and they finally peaked with the Mark 12. That was later upgraded even further with steel brew armor, basically additional armor on the turret. There was meant to be a Mark 13, however, but that was cancelled when the Chieftain was eventually replaced by the Challenger 1. The Chieftain itself saw all of its combat experience in the Middle East where it was used extensively in the Iran-Iraq War between 1980 and 1988. These were mainly Chieftain Mark III-5s, and like all Chieftains, they suffered from incredibly unreliable engines. I mean, the Chieftain engine is very unreliable. The last time the Chieftains were used in anger was by the Kuwaitis in the 1991 Gulf War. Some Chieftains are still in operation, albeit under different designations, such as the Khalid tank, a tank based upon the Shia 1 design of the Chieftain and used by the Jordanian Armed Forces. Other nations that still use the Chieftain, albeit various different designations, are that of Oman and Iran. Now in the game, we have a Chieftain Mark VI, which is basically a, an upgraded Chieftain Mark II. Now the Mark II was the initial production variant and over time, the British Ordnance decided to upgrade the Mark IIs to the specification of that of the Mark V, which is the final production variant, the result of which was the Mark VI. So the Mark VI is like the basic production tank brought up to, the, to speed with the specifications of the later version of the tank. The Mark VI entered service in 1975, but it was, a, it was literally phased out four years later when all the Mark VI's were upgraded to Mark IX's in 1979. The game, however, does give a pretty accurate representation of a Mark VI, although the horsepower in the game is significantly higher than that in real life. The game version has 825 horsepower, whereas the Mark VI only had 750 horsepower.
Now this is most likely to do with the fact that the game uses the Leyland L60 Mark 13A engine, an engine that was introduced in 1980 to try and patch over all the terrible reliability issues that the original engines had. The real Mark VI used a Leyland L60 Mark IV A2 engine, which, as I said, was not a very reliable engine. In fact, none of the engines, even the upgraded ones on the Chieftain, were that reliable. Despite all of this, around 1,896 Chieftains were eventually built, and if you pop yourself off to Bovington for Tankfest, you will generally always see one Chieftain rolling around the battlefield. I myself have fired and driven a Chieftain for my sins. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been a little different video on five tier 10 tanks that really did exist and really did see combat. So by all means, comment in everything below. And until the next time, guys, stay safe up there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking, because that is what it's all about, having fun and being happy.